Us here at Soul Engine Studio are about to release our first commercial game in just a few months. It's a game called Cave Masters. You can go check it out in the description below. And it is an amazing feeling to get to this point. I wish I could say the journey to this point was easy, but it wasn't. The truth of the matter is, I spent almost 10 years trying to get to this point right here. And I made so many mistakes trying to get here. I wish I had avoided them because honestly, they kept me from getting to this point. And actually, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about the mistakes that were keeping me from getting to this point so that hopefully you can avoid them and start releasing games as well and maybe even finding your own version of success. Let's get into it. My first mistake as a solo dev actually is the same mistake a lot of people make and that mistake is overscoping. Man, all of my first projects were huge. I tried making a Monster Hunter clone. I tried making a Final Fantasy Tactics type game. I tried making sports games. I tried just, I don't know why, I just desired to make a huge game and they were all just too big and I was never going to complete them. This led me to never finishing projects. Because of it, it kind of kept me from learning valuable details about what it means to actually finish a project and what it means to actually get to the point where you're happy with your project, if that's even possible. I'm, I'm convinced that none of us actually enjoy our projects and we all kind of hate them secretly. Sometimes I do, but you gotta be careful of this because if you are just making these giant projects and you actually aren't finishing projects, you're missing out on key details of how to finish a project. I can tell you that because that was me. I did not know how to finish projects for the first seven years of my game development journey. I didn't finish a single project for the first seven years. And you know why? Because they were all too big. So avoid this. How did I avoid this? How did I actually get out of that pit of overscoping? Game jams. Game jam. I've made, I made a video about it. You can go check it out over here. Game jams saved my game dev career. Once I started making game jam games, I could not stop. Well, I made the first one and then I made five others. And it really got me in the mindset of finishing and the mindset of completing something that I've started. And now that we're, you know, getting close to finishing our first commercial game, I'm so happy I have those skills. So don't overscope like I did because you might regret it. My second mistake as a solo developer and as a game developer even today is perfectionism. Hold the phone, perfectionism. It kept me locked away for so long. It kept me hidden because I wanted everything to be absolutely pristine before anybody saw it. The reality is, is nothing is perfect. Look at games like Undertale or even like retro games. They're not perfect. They have many flaws. And sometimes those flaws even make a game better you know? But for some reason, this held me back in a huge way. And even as I make this video right now, I'm constantly thinking about like, did I say that word right? Did my pronunciation sound correct? And then dial that to 11 with game dev. But if I allow all of those perfectionist things to hold me back, I'm, I'm never going to get anything done. And unfortunately, it kept me from making games for a long time. And so because of that, I didn't really have any accountability. And when you choose not to tell anybody and you choose not to have that accountability, who's going to tell you to try again? or to not give up because I didn't move forward because of that and because of that it took me 10 years to get to this point so don't let it hold you back I know it's so easy to say that but don't let it hold you back something that I learned through actually YouTube and then it's translated over to my game dev is not being perfect is actually good in a world where CGI and AI make everything cookie cutter it's good to not be perfect it actually makes you human and it's good to be human. It's good to be human. Remember that. Let's jump to the next one. Mental health. Mental health is a big one. Um, I say that actually from a standpoint that is dealing with it right now. I feel like I'm at, it's, it's so bizarre because I feel like I'm at like, I'm in the best spot of my game dev career I've ever been, you know? Like I, I'm actually doing what I wanna do. I'm a stay at home dad and I get to do game dev. It's literally the dream and I, I realize how blessed I am. I am incredibly blessed and yet I feel off, you know? I feel like I could be doing more. And this is really holding me back and it's held me back in the past. And it's important to realize that burnout is whatever you want to call it, burnout, depression, whatever. It's coming for you. It's, it, burnout affects us all. And you need to figure out how you're going to deal with it when it does hit you. You need to watch yourself. You need to take, you need to check yourself. You need to do an inventory of your thoughts and your feelings and your, just how you look at game dev. Honestly, for me, I'm really struggling with this right now. So what I can tell you is that in the past, I did this alone. 
And the thing that's making the difference now is that I'm actually talking about it and that I am staying connected to many different people that check in with me often. And that has helped me so much. But having a way to check yourself and keep yourself accountable to other people as far as your mental health will make a huge difference. I actually made a video about this. Again, I made a video about the signs of burnout and um, because it's it's it really holds back creators. It held me back. And the thing that really has made the difference and is making the difference now is being connected and talking to people. And um, you need that. So go find someone to talk to. Go find a community. There's Discord communities everywhere. Go, go surround yourself with people who want to succeed. And you might even find people who will want to walk that journey with you. So watch out because burnout's coming for you. It came for me, it's coming for me. Get prepared and don't let it drag you down too far. Just keep going. The last one had a serious note, so whatever. <laughs> but something that for some reason I didn't do um, in my journey was I didn't plan. I didn't, I would just have this idea in my head and I'd be like, I wanna bring that to life. And um, guess what? It never came to life. You need to plan. You need to get a GDD, game develop, game dev, game design document. You need to get a game design to document. I'll have one in the description below. Thomas Brush has a good one. A lot of people have good ones. But get yourself a game design document and start getting your ideas down so you can come back to it. This will make a huge difference when your back is against the wall and you're like, what the heck do I do? Your, de your design document is gonna come in clutch. It'll also help you figure out what matters. You just need to do that in general, whether you have a design document or not. Figure out what matters for your game and use those as guideposts. You know, if you're making a platformer, which I don't necessarily recommend because the genre is flooded with them, figure out how to do it really well. Figure out how to be the best at it. Figure out how to make it your own without letting perfectionism get a hold of you. But figure out what matters. Figure out what matters. And then on the flip side of that, figure out where you lack. Figure out what brings your process to a halt. And this absolutely should be a part of your planning process because if you know what holds you up, you can get ahead of the problem. You can get ahead of the issue and start even brainstorming in the back of your head about how to solve the problem. And planning and having a layout of your game and the details, it's gonna help you uncover those things. I did not do this. I, like I said, would just come up with an idea and go for it. And there is some cool stuff that is cool sometimes, but it doesn't really lead to completing projects. It doesn't really lead to people seeing your game, which is huge. People need to see your game. They need to give you some feedback. And honestly, what changed this whole thing for me, so for example, where I lacked was music and art. And because of my perfectionism from earlier, I didn't even, I just, nope, I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm not gonna plan for it. I'm not gonna think about it. No, I'll, I'll deal with it when I get there. Terrible decision, by the way. Don't do that. You gotta meet the problem head on. And that, that happens when you're planning. So yeah, music and art were huge for me and I chose not to deal with it. And so guess what? No, no projects got completed, obviously. But once I did deal with those problems, once I did choose to tackle those issues, that's when things started to change. When I started viewing the Unity Asset Store and actually opening myself up to that because for a while there, I, I didn't want to do that. And that's actually maybe a video for a different day. But once I opened myself up to allowing others to help and being open to different tools that would like assist me, it changed everything. It changed everything. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help because it's going to help you where you're lacking. And you can only know that from having a plan and knowing what you're going to deal with and knowing where you lack that all comes from planning. And obviously there's some things you can't plan for, but if you do all that you can, if you do your best, it will absolutely make a difference. And I absolutely did not do this for a long time. So I cannot recommend planning, getting a GDD game design document. I'll have one below, get one, get planning, figure out where you lack, figure out where you excel and get some help. That actually kind of leads to my next one. The, this is the biggest one, actually. For a long time, I was like, I'm going solo, see you later. I'm not getting no one's help. It's all me. It's all Matthew. What you see is what you get. And that's terrible. At least it was terrible for me. Teaming up was the best decision I've ever made. I've said that multiple times. If you're curious of how to team up, I got a video about that as well. I, for some reason, always want to point over here. I have a video about that as well. Go check it out if you're looking to team up. You might want to team up after this video. But man, teaming up, getting a team together, getting people to help you that are going to stick around, it changed my life, actually. Really. 
It changed my life. Before having a team, I was isolated. Like I've mentioned before, I was isolated. Didn't want anybody to know, actually. I was like, I didn't want even my friends to know. And if they did know, it was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of doing this thing over here. It's not a big deal. Uh, that's dumb. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't isolate yourself. Maybe if, if, you think you would want to be a part of a team go check out my video because i was isolated and maybe you're isolated and can lead to burnout perfectionism all that jazz you don't want to be isolated for some reason i just wanted to do everything myself and i didn't want anybody to see it or i just didn't want anybody to know when i teamed up it changed everything first of all it just relieves a weight man programming was terrifying if we go look at our hio page those first games were programmed by me and they were not fantastic greg bless his soul did the art and music and that is the best part of those games but the programming i desperately needed help for and i didn't get the help and they those games are lacking because of it once i got a team and i was able to share that heavy weight of programming huh whoo I finally have time to relax, time to not stress about it. And it, like I said, changed everything. I finally had time to do other things, you know, like level design and really take my time to make levels and to do YouTube and get good at it and research and research everything about game dev. Having a team allowed me to do that. And I cannot recommend it enough because I was so against it for some reason. I was so against teaming up. I didn't want to tell anybody. And maybe you're feeling that way. Maybe you're feeling like you can't find a team. Maybe you're feeling like everybody's flaky. Many people are I myself am flaky sometimes I should not deter you if you are actually looking for a team because if you look long enough you will find people like yourself who do want to actually do this who do want to find team members and make games and maybe even go full-time there are people out there that are like that it's just a look if you're looking to make a team go check out my video I actually pointed the right way go check out my video because it'll help you I got discord links I got all the kinds of stuff there go check it out so that's it those are the five mistakes that really kept me from getting to this point now hopefully with what I mentioned you can dodge those bullets but it is difficult and none of us are perfect and that's important to remember none of us are perfect there goes the perfectionism again and it's okay to struggle it's okay to struggle but it's not okay to get help if you need it so get connected with people if there's anything you've learned from today get connected with with people because it's going to make all the difference if you want to check out our game cave masters the prototype slash old demo is on our itch page it'll be linked in the description below and if you're curious about any of the topics that we talked about today i actually made videos about a lot of them they'll be in the description below if you want to support the channel hit that like and subscribe button let me know what uh mistakes you've made along the way and how you've learned from them in the comments below i would love to read them i want to know i want to know and other people want to know it's important to share. So, thank you guys for being here today. Keep chasing that game dev dream, and I will see you next time.